Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss some tricky questions from March 2020 Paper 1 Variant 2. In this lesson, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding and you can have better understanding about this type of questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For question number 4, it is given to us a transmitter emits a pulse of electromagnetic waves towards a reflector. The pulse is reflected and returns to the transmitter. A detector is located at the transmitter. So very important point. Detector is located at the transmitter. Means detector and transmitter they are at the same place. The emitted pulse and the reflected pulse are displayed on a cathode ray oscilloscope as shown in the figure. So this pulse is the transmitted pulse. So we can say the transmitted or simply we can say this one is emitted pulse. So this one is emitted pulse and this one is the reflected pulse or simply we can say this one is the pulse received reflected you can say or simply you can say this is received pulse reflected or received pulse and this one is emitted pulse or you can say transmitted pulse and this one is reflected or received pulse for this question it is also given to us the pulse takes 6.3 microseconds to travel from transmitter to the reflector we need to find out what is time based setting of the CRO you can simply sketch we have a transmitter so simply we can label this one this one is transmitter so this is transmitter and detector is also located at the same place so we can also say this one is also over detector so transmitter and detector they are located at the same place so as we transmit electromagnetic waves from here they will go to the reflector so you can imagine this one is over reflector so this one is reflector so the best way to answer this problem is sketch so these waves they will travel from here they will go to this reflector and after reflection from this one they will reach detector so they will reach detector but for this question time is given to us from transmitter to reflector this time is given so the time is given to us from transmitter to reflector that is equal to 6.3 microsecond 6.3 microseconds but we need to understand the total time taken from transmitter to detector so this time also has to be 6.3 microseconds now in this case we have emitted pulse and we have reflected pulse if you look at number of boxes between them you can see we have three boxes so we have three boxes between these pulses I mean peak to peak you can see so we have one box here we have two box here and we have three boxes between emitted pulse and reflected pulse and these three boxes these three boxes they are equal to two times or simply i can write down in a different way these three boxes they are representing 6.3 microsecond plus 6.3 microseconds it simply means that in this case three boxes are equal to 6.3 plus 6.3 microseconds so we need to find out for one box one box so in this case we can add these two together these two we can add together so we will get this is 12.6 and we need to divide this one by 3 so we will get in this case that is equal to 4.2 microsecond and this one is the time base setting so this is time base setting I mean one box is equal to 4.2 microseconds so this is time base setting and this is what question is asking you to calculate time base setting so the answer for this question is c so this is how you need to approach these problems the common mistake among students is that when they look at this time they will just write on this time here. but this is not the time between transmission and detection this is only the time between transmitter and reflector so you have to double this time and then just simply divide by number of boxes and you can find your final answer 
answer. So in this case, final answer is C. For question number eight, it is given to us a person of mass 60 kg stands on accurate bathroom scales placed on the floor of an elevator which operates in a tall building. At a certain instant, bathroom scales read 58 kg. We need to find out which row could give the person's direction of movement and type of motion. Now let's try to understand this one by sketching diagram. A sketching diagram is always very helpful and very important to answer any problem. Let's sketch first of all bathroom scale. Imagine that this one is a bathroom scale and this bathroom scale is placed in an elevator. So we can simply draw this one is an elevator. So we can close this is the ceiling of elevator and imagine that a person is standing on this bathroom scale. The person is standing here. For this question it is given to us weight of the person is 60 kgs. It means the force acting on the person downwards that force is 60 g newton g is equal to 9.81 g is not equal to gram g actually is equal to 9.81 and the force acting on this person in upward direction is 58 kg is 58 we can write down 58 times g g is equal to 9.81 newtons so this is the normal reaction force acting on this person upwards because bathroom scale tells us value of normal reaction force. So the normal reaction force on this person means the pushing force on this person in upward direction is 58g. So from here we can find out the resultant force acting on the person because we need to find person's direction of movement. So we need to draw free body diagram for the person and we need to draw the forces acting on the person, acting on the person. So very important one. So in this case resultant force, so we can say this one is resultant force. So this is the resultant force. I just draw these two arrows to emphasize. So the resultant force in this case is equal to 2g newtons and this resultant force is acting downwards. As resultant force is downward, it also means that acceleration is downwards. So acceleration is down. So in this case, we have found type of motion. Means the person is accelerating or person is decelerating. Now, if acceleration is downwards, there are two possibilities. If the person is moving upwards, so let's say if the person is moving upwards, means the elevator is moving upwards. So in this case, if direction of motion is upwards the person will slow down person will slow down why person will slow down because direction of velocity is upwards and acceleration is down so they are in opposite direction it means person will slow down and the second possibility is if elevator is moving downward it means person is also moving downwards so moving downwards if moving downwards then in this case v this is down acceleration is also down so the person will speed up so we will say person will speed up elevator will speed up and so now we need to look at given options and we can find the answer so if it is downwards downwards it has to speed up so this is not possible if downwards it has to speed up so this is also not possible if moving upwards it has to slow down so this option is also not possible moving upwards it has to slow down so moving upwards it has to slow down so the answer for this question is d so this is a beautiful way to answer this problem this is how you can approach i hope this one is clear to you for question number 13 it is given to us three coplanar forces act on a block we need to find out which diagram shows direction of the forces such that block is in equilibrium for block to be in equilibrium it has to fulfill two conditions first condition is that net force in any direction has to be equal to zero and the second condition is net moment about any point has to be equal to zero net moment has to be equal to zero if net force acting on the body is equal to zero it simply means that forces acting on object they should form closed polygon closed polygon it can be triangle it can be rectangle it can be pentagon closed polygon they should form closed polygon. If net moment is equal to zero, forces should intersect at one point. Forces should intersect at single point. Our forces should pass through a single point. 
So these two points we need to consider to answer this problem. First of all, if you get option D, this is quite straightforward one. In this case, you can see if I extend line of action of this force, you can see is passing through this point. And if we extend this force, line of action of this force is also passing through this point. That if we draw line of action of this force, this is not passing through this point. So it simply means that in this case, net moment will not be equal to zero. So we'll say net moment not equal to zero. But in this case, net force is equal to zero because sum of these two is equal to sum of this force. So we will say in this case, F net is equal to zero. But net moment is not equal to zero. So it simply means that in this case, there will be rotation because there is net torque acting on this block. So this is not our possible answer. Now, if you go to option C, for option C, we can also draw line of action of forces. So we can extend arrow. So this arrow, I can extend like this. So this is, we can extend this line of action of this force. We can also extend line of action of this force. So you can draw these lines, line of action of this force. We can also extend line of action of this force. So you can see all these three forces, they are intersecting at this single point. They are passing through this single point. So if you take moment about this point, net moment will be equal to zero. So in this case, net moment is equal to zero. But net force is not equal to zero. So let me clear these arrows and explain to you why net force in this case is not equal to zero. So in this case, net force is not zero. So let's try to understand why net force is not equal to zero. We can simply understand in this case as this force is acting vertically down if we resolve this force into two component we will see this component is of this force is also acting vertically down that there is no component of force that is acting vertically upward it means there is a force along y direction and also if we look at forces along x-axis this force is acting to the right this is also acting to the right and there is no force to balance this force so it means there will be a result force also along x-axis then there will be a resultant force along y-axis so in this case net force is not equal to zero so it means that this is also not in equilibrium so this is also not possible answer so answer can be a r or answer can be b for part c we have discussed that f net is not equal to zero so our answer can be A or our answer can be B. Now let's try to find out which one is the best possible answer. First of all, we will look at A. If you look at A, in this case, we can simply add these arrows. So we can take this arrow and we can place this one here. And we can take this second arrow and we can also place this one here. So in this case, you can see they do not form a closed polygon. It simply means that in this case, F net is not equal to zero. So F net is not equal to zero. We can also extend line of action of these forces. Line of action of these forces mean if we extend this force and we can also extend this force line of action of this force and we can also extend line of action of this force they are not passing through a single point because these two forces they pass through this point and these two forces they pass through this point so they are not passing through a single so it means in this case moment is also not equal to zero so we can say net moment in this case is also not equal to zero so it means this option is not possible so our answer for this question has to be b so this one is the answer so first of all we can check the line of action of these forces so we can simply extend these arrows so we can extend so we can see are they passing through a single point or not we can extend this arrow like this and we can extend this arrow so we can also extend this arrow so you can see all these forces they're passing through a single point it means that net moment 
in this case is equal to zero so we can say net moment is equal to zero now we need to find out is the resultant force in this case is equal to zero or not so we need to simply add these forces if they form a closed polygon so it means the resultant force is equal to zero so for this question simply we will take arrow first of all you will take this horizontal one and then you can add the second one we can take the second arrow we can add this one here so this is the second one and the third arrow we can draw from here and we can add so they will form a closed polygon as they form a closed polygon it also means that net force is equal to zero so our answer for this question is p but you need to understand these length these arrows the length is not the same so that's the reason if you add all of them together they will form a closed polygon so the answer for this question is p so they have different lengths so this one is shorter this is a bit longer and this is the longest so if we add all of them together they will form a closed polygon so it means resultant force is equal to zero so this is how you can answer this type of problems for question number 18 it is given to us a car travels at a constant speed of 25 meters per second up a slope the wheels driven by the engine exerts a forward force of 3000 newtons the total force due to a resistance and friction is equal to 2000 1100 newtons the weight of the car has a component down the slope of 900 newtons what is the rate at which thermal energy is dissipated so the best way to answer this problem is first of all we can sketch so we can sketch the inclined plane so this one is the inclined plane for this question it is given to us the car is moving up the plane so we can imagine that this one is the car and it is given to us a resistance and friction forces acting on this one they are equal to we can simply say fr that is equal to 2100 newton so this is the sum of a resistance and friction so we have said simply this is resistive force and it is also given to us that component of the weight that is acting down the slope so we can also draw a component of weight that is acting down the slope that is equal to 900 newtons and the force by car engine that is up the slope and that force is equal to 3000 newtons and the speed of the car is given car is moving at a constant speed speed is equal to 25 meters per second question is asking us rate at which thermal energy is dissipated so simply we can write down rate at which thermal energy is dissipated Thermal energy is dissipated. Rate at which thermal energy is dissipated, that is equal to work done by resistive forces divided by time. Work done by resistive forces divided by time. Or simply we can say, work done in this case will be equal to resistive force times speed. Time speed. So in this case, resistive force is given, that is equal to 2100 newtons. And the speed of the car is given, that is 25. So simply if we multiply these two, our final answer will be equal to 5.3 times 10 to 4 watts. So this is the rate at which thermal energy is dissipated. So pretty straightforward question if your concept is clear. So this is how we can calculate. Simply this is power dissipated. So we can say this one is power dissipated. So this is how you can calculate power dissipated. But in this case, if you need to calculate rate of gain of potential energy rate of gain of potential energy you can also calculate rate of gain of gpe gravitational potential energy that one will be equal to gravitational force that is acting down the slope means the component of weight time speed so you can simply multiply 900 in this case by the speed so you can also calculate rate of gain of gpe means rate of gain of gravitational potential energy so you can also calculate so the main thing is that your concept has to be clear so this question is pretty straightforward one so rate at which thermal energy is dissipated that is equal to resistive force times the speed of the car so our answer for this question is c so 
if your concept is clear, you understand question first of all, then pretty straightforward. For question number 20, it is given to us the graph shows non-linear force extension curve for a wire made from a new composite material. We need to find out what is the best estimate of the work done in stretching the wire to point B. So it simply means that we need to calculate area under this curve. But in order to calculate area under this curve, we need to estimate because it is hard to get the exact value of area under this curve. So we need to estimate. In order to estimate, we can draw a triangle. We can draw a triangle. So we can connect this point with this point. So this is a triangle. And we can calculate area of this triangle. And that area will represent work done. So we can simply say, in this case, area is equal to 1 by 2 and the force is 100 and we need to multiply by extension that is equal to 2 millimeters. So this is 2 times 10 to minus 3 meters and if we solve this one our answer will be equal to 0 0.10 joules. I mean this area is representing work done. So our work done in this case will be equal to 0 0.10 joules. But this is not best estimate because we need to add this area as well. So answer has to be greater than this one. So the best estimate can be this answer. So so this is answer for this question. This is not possible because this is small and this is too small and this is too big area because this is the area of rectangle. So this is area of rectangle. So it is much greater than actual work done. So this is also not possible. So the answer for this question is C. So this is how you can approach this type of problems. For question number 26, it is given to us a musical instrument is made from a long tube with a mouthpiece at one end and the other end is open and flared as shown in the figure. A musician maintains stationary sound waves with a node at the mouthpiece and an anti-node at the other end. So this is mouthpiece. So here is a node. So we can simply write it. Here is a node and here is anti-node. The lowest frequency of sound that the instrument can produce is 92 hertz. 92. Very important. 92 hertz. So this one is the fundamental fundamental frequency. We can say this one is F1 or you can say this is F0. Which different frequencies of sound can be produced by the instrument? Now, first thing you need to understand is this pipe. Is it one end closed pipe or is it two ends open pipe? This is one end closed pipe because on one end always we have a node. So simply we can say this is one end closed pipe one and closed pipe as this is one and closed pipe so in this case only odd harmonics are possible or simply you can say only odd harmonics will produce only odd harmonics odd harmonics simply means that this is our first harmonic fundamental frequency and the next one will be f3 then we will get f5 and then we will get f7 so in this case we have f3 that one will be equal to three times of f1 so we can say three times of f1 so this will be three times 92 and if we solve this one, we will get 276 hertz. And next possible harmonic is F5, I mean the fifth harmonic, or we can say third maximum. That one will be equal to five times of F1. So here we will have five times fundamental frequency that is 92. So we will get 460 hertz. And next possible harmonic is F7. That will be seven times of F1. So if we multiply in this case seven with 92, we will get 600. 44 hertz. So these harmonics are possible. So we will also get F9 and so on. F9, F11 and so on. So based on this one, we can find the best possible answer. So here we have 276, we have 460, 644. If you look at given options, for option A, it is given to us 92, this one is possible. 138, this is not possible. If you go to option B, 92, this one is possible. 184, not 
not possible in one and closed pipe because only odd harmonic. So this is also incorrect option. If we go to C, it is given to us 92 possible, 276 possible, 460 possible in one and closed pipe and 644 also possible because you can see all of these harmonics here. So it means our answer for this question is C. But if you look at option D, 92 is possible because this is first harmonic. 276 possible because this is third harmonic. 828 this is also possible because this is ninth harmonic mean nine times of 92. And this one is F 14 and this is even so this one is not possible in one and closed pipe so this option is also incorrect so over and so far this question is c so let me explain you one more point about both ends open pipe both ends open pipe for both ends open pipe you need to understand odd and even harmonics are possible odd plus even harmonics in both ends open pipe we can produce odd and even harmonic it simply means that f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 and so on so all odd and even harmonics are possible in both ends open pipe but only odd harmonics are possible in one and closed pipe so this is what you need to understand about one and closed pipe and both ends open pipe so if you have this understanding a lot of past paper questions you can answer by yourself